Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you all are doing good and well. In today's video, we are doing another collab and we're talking about my top 20 nail polishes of 2023. I am late to the party as usual, but you guys will find all the usual suspects down in the description box below, as well as some newcomers. So this year, I actually have a pretty surprising lineup for myself because I do have two full collections that I bought and they're both spring collections evolving pastels that you can see behind me which is a rarity for me because I don't really gravitate towards pastel and then of course I have some honorable mentions at the end that I didn't get to try out but that I absolutely loved when I swatched on my swatch wheel so let's just get into this video the first collection that we're gonna be talking about is dimension nails milk plant-based jelly collection I adored these when this came out this is the first Full collection that I've been really enticed by in a really really long time and I actually didn't expect to pick up all but I just thought they were so beautiful and I don't have any pastel jellies in my collection so I was like I definitely I need these yes also I'm hoping that she comes out with kind of like a 2.0 version where it's just darker jellies I would love that because I don't see a lot of um, brands come out with pastel jellies a lot. Starly actually came out with um, a really really lovely jelly collection last year and it was on the darker side. I just love these so much and I'm so excited to play with them in the springtime. I don't have any splashes to show you guys because I hasn't I didn't get to them but this entire collection is on this year's spring rack so yeah definitely love this collection. Next we have Essie's spring collection. Both pastel collections guys what can I say? Uh, this one was so cute. I wore this has a Skittle manicure for my birthday back in June and I actually put the fill the fizzle fill the fizzle <laughs> topper on top of the whole thing and I loved it. It was the namesake of the collection. This full collection I bought on what was it? The polish hub.com and I say that <sighs> with such sadness because I feel like all the Canadian shops have closed down for nail polish. Uh, I know Nail Polish Canada closed this year, which was one of my favorite sites to shop on. Beyond Polish Canada is kaput, so I mean, it's gonna be hard for me to get my mainstreams, but I was happy to pick this whole collection up because I absolutely love this color palette. I don't have any of these colors in my collection. I have something similar, but they're not dead on dupes, so yeah, I just knew I wanted this collection really bad. It's just so cute and unique and whimsical, and it's totally just a whole spring vibe. Moving to the rest of those polish picks, we're starting at number three, and this is Swamp Glosses, I Can Do Whatever the F I Want. This came out in March's HHC, and this color combo is what my nail polish dreams are made of. This one was absolutely beautiful. That hot pink neon base against those electric blue glitters, gorgeous and this also um doubles has a black light polish so it definitely glows under black light i haven't tried it yet but i think it just makes it the perfect halloween polish so i did actually wear this in october and oh, so breathtaking this is my one and only swamp gloss and swamp gloss is a very very unique brand next to cadillac or they have very very interesting uh color combinations and this I got this in lieu of not having one of Cadillacers, which is Parade. So I'm hoping that one comes back for Rewind one day. But yeah, definitely love this one class. So good. Fourth up, we have Mooncat's Bread and Butterflies. This These aren't in any order, by the way. I'm just, um, just lining them up how I wanted. But this magnetic is just breathtaking, you guys. I don't have any magnetic like this in my collection and I wore this for a good nine days in November I could not stop staring at my nails it was glistening in the Sun that magnetic line really really popped I think gold and pink and yellow go together so well I said this many times but I'll say it again I think of polish combinations as color blocking in my wardrobe this one and definitely definitely goes down as one of the most unique polishes in my collection currently. Next we have one of two polishes I got in PR. This is Crack Polishes PB and Blue J. And this will go down as an all year polish for me. It is so elegant and yet unique at the same time. It has this icy blue base with this interesting like silvery purple flip. I really want to pair this with a silver magnetic to kind of bring out the silver just a bit more. I think that silver line through this would be the perfect 
perfect winter look. This is one brand that I'm going to be looking out for next year because what she's released in such a short amount of time has been really eye-catching. Next we have a Cadillacer. This is Orchid. This one came out in April's PPU for the flower theme and I mean how does this not match the name so well? This iridescent flakies in here matching with those hot pink glitters against that light light robin's egg Tiffany base. This is a beautiful spring polish. I think I ended up wearing it in July actually so it makes it a nice summer polish too but yeah I think I'm gonna have to wear this again in the springtime because I just I absolutely just loved it and I wouldn't be surprised if this actually came back for a rewind and my favorite part is those iridescent flakies. They look like glass shards. So interesting. Next, we have one from Vapid Lacquer that came out in the same month as the Cadillacer. This is called Corpse Flower. And this one is the one of the most shiftiest polishes I have in my collection. And it has these subtle, subtle iridescent flakies in there as well. Usually I like it when iridescent flakies are just jam-packed, especially in such a dark base, because you know, you just want something to pop against that dark base. But the sparsity of these ones. I, I like it because you can really see how shifty the base is. It even has a bit of brown in it. This was such a beautiful Halloween polish. This is one polish I did not want to take off my nails. I think I'm loving shifties just as much as I love flakies. I don't know which finish I like more. <laughs> but this one definitely is going to go down as one of my most favorite shifties in my collection and this one was that blacker's intro back into polish pickup after taking a hiatus so yeah i think it was a good welcome back polish so that was corpse flower next we have the king of the most shiftiest polishes i've ever graced my nails this is great lakes lacquers come again which came out in the same month as no this came out in march's ppu i was gonna say april but it was march for the rainy days theme this was absolutely beautiful you guys Great Lakes Lacquer is 100% my favorite brand for shimmers now. In the short amount of time that I have tried them, they have really upped the ante for other brands when it comes to shimmers. And that says a lot since I've only tried one. This one really, really spoke to me. I just loved how moody and just beautiful and elegant it looks. It looked breathtaking in the sun. The shifts were just, is this multifaceted dual chrome i just i was in love and i think this is definitely one of my favorite favorite polishes of all time in my collection so that was great lakes lacquers come again next we have one from mj lacquer one of my favorite indie brands this is they call me mr tibbs this one did come out in february's ppu and this shifts in here completely reminded me of uh, mooncat lacquers uh, dragon scales but now I have Live Love Polishes, what they were before, um, Jam Sessions. So, I mean, I'm going to do a comparison video that is coming up for you guys. And they are definitely not dupes, but they have some similarities. But this one has that gold reflective glitter in it that is just so incredibly stunning. I loved the shifts in this one. I told you, I picked a lot of shifties. And I'm very, very impressed by every single one. This is another one where the flakies weren't jam-packed they were sparse i would classify this as one of those kitchen sink polishes it has just a bit of everything in it it has a multi-chrome it has flakies it has shimmer it's a trifecta of a polish and i loved it so that was mj lacquers they call me mr tibbs i have my very first mainstream on this rack to share with you guys this is essie's one way for one and this just solidified why i love gold and pink together so much. I'm actually very shocked how strong the glow is considering this is a mainstream brand and this is totally giving me indie vibes. I wore this on vacation in August and it was perfect with everything that I wore. It just went with everything so well and I think I'm gonna have to get this on my toes this summer. Maybe do kind of a matching vibe. I did that a little bit last summer but um, not too much. But this one was so beautiful and I actually first saw this on Some Call Me Coco Diana's channel and she has one of the most best taste in polishes I've ever seen. So, you know, when I saw this, I knew I had to pick it up. Um, this is just so beautiful and a great pick for Messi. 
Next, we have Ethereal Lacquer's Coffee Cloud. I mean, I am surprised, but not surprised at the same time to see this in everybody's rack because I think this was just a polish that was a bit too hyped up. But I bought into the hype, and I mean, this is 100% worth it this is what made me just love that ghastly kind of peekaboo glow in polishes against that lavender like cappuccino brown base the base in here is just pairs so well with that shimmer i this is a combination i never would have thought of and i know um ethereal lacquer is a bit of a controversial brand but i do really love this polish this is my one and only from the brand i am really impressed with what she puts out um i don't pick up everything obviously but this one definitely spoke to me i wore this back in june for over a week i'm pretty sure but that's probably why i didn't get to a lot of manicures in june but yeah, this one was so beautiful and had to go one of my top picks. Next, we have one from Lumen. This one did come out in January's PPU for the Greek mythology theme, and this is called Wild Moon. This was breathtaking, you guys. I did not want to take this off when I wore it in March, and it also matched this these pair of pants that I have, which I loved even more. This polish has a very, very interesting kind of purpley, lavendy, smoky undertone. And then the gold just really complements it. You can see this color contrast would be make a great outfit. And when you guys in my monthly manicures, um, or maybe my wish list, but I can't remember, someone said that um, if I was really digging shifties, I should check this out. And I did, and I was not disappointed. So when you guys recommend me stuff, I absolutely love it. If someone didn't recommend this to me, I probably wouldn't even looked at it. That undertone in there, the purple with the gold, just really sets this apart from the others. So that was Lumen's Wild Moon. We have the second one I got in PR from Alicia's Lacquer. This is called Jingle Dress Dreams. I am a big, big fan of thermals, and this one is so dang unique. I mean, that color change in there is just... It's just so eye-catching to look at. When it's in its cold state, it is in this actually dual chrome that flips from this aqua green to this kind of moody, like sea blue, and then it transforms into this really milky lavender color. I just, oh, I love this. If I didn't get this in PR, I would have purchased for the month of November because this is one of the only polishes that spoke to me and instantly became oh, one of my favorites of the year. The flakies in there complement the base so well. I feel like this is a mermaid thermal for me. It is giving under the sea vibes and I'm completely in love with it. So that was Jingle Dress Dreams. We have another shifty. This is Cleonar Cosmetics Rainbows, also released in March's PPU for the Rainy Days theme, Rainbow After the Storm. This was absolutely perfect in the month of june i love this i could have worn this for the entire month you guys this polish is so dang unique the dash of reflective glitter in here makes this one of the most one of my favorite reflective glitters <laughs> polishes in my collection the shifts in here were just too breathtaking i didn't think it'd be as shifty as it was because you know when i look at stuff in the bottle i try not to get too excited because i'm like what if it doesn't transcend to my nails that way but this one delivered it it's the polish that keeps on giving it's so so good so i understand why it came back for rewind i'm not regretting not getting a backup bottle because i'm trying to not do that anymore <laughs> but yeah this one i think is just gonna be worn real often so that was cleonod's rainbows after that we're talking about fancy glasses supernova this is hands down one of my favorite purples the shifts in here are just too dang spectacular and i use this polish to dupe a dawn polish that came out in polish pickup with two toppers from crystal designs and it seriously seriously delivered this was the greatest great spooky vibes for the month of october wore this for about a week and i just absolutely love the shifts in here next time i wear this i think i'm gonna have to put it on matte because it just oh i'm the shimmer it's it's just too much <laughs> this was a lot of fun and this is definitely going to grace my nails again sometime soon so that was fancy glosses supernova 
Oh, next, we have one of my top, top picks. This is KB Shimmer's, almost forgot the name. <laughs> anyway, you slice it. This came out in their summer collection. And this polish, when I got um, Lucky Finn from Polish for Days for my Black Friday haul last year, I was excited when I, when I got it. But when I swatched it, I realized that it wasn't, it was more of um, the smaller particles that I wanted to see less of I want to see more of the bigger particles and with this green yellow shift in here this was the perfect summer orange I was obsessed with orange polishes last year and this is my favorite one that I tried I think this is similar to their patch things up that came out in their fall collection but um I just I love this one and I didn't want to pick up that one because I don't want to have too many similar polishes in my collection but had to see more swatches of it I'm like maybe I need it because they are quite different this is the summer one and that one's the autumn one and I'm sure I'd love the autumn one even more so that was KB Shimmer's Any Way You Slice It one of my favorite favorite creams that I've wore was Zoya's Harbor this color is just that perfect toe color it really really just will make your skin tone pop anybody can have a beautiful manicure when they wear this it's beautiful this is a one coat cream the formula on it's fantastic and it really really gives those aquamarine sea vibes it speaks to the name harbor it totally reminds you of you know being on a beach or just like a seafront it's beautiful this could possibly be an all year polish i see a lot of polishes like this like orly's vintage or opi's my dog slide is a hybrid which i do have they are not the same they're definitely different you'll see in my comparison video but this one I absolutely loved in the month of March. It was perfect and I paired it with Chris, another Crystal Design topper that I am loving and it just totally gave perfect Easter egg vibes. Love this one. We have another thermal this time. It's from Fancy Gloss. This is Strawberry Basil and this goes down as one of the most interesting color contrasts in my collection. I love how dark and moody um, the cold state is and in the warm state it's this bubbly girly pink it's like the best of both worlds it's like having barbie and oppenheimer on your nails at the same time <laughs> this would have been perfect to wear <laughs> for that week when the, both the movies came out this was so fun i just want all fancy gloss thermals they just has i'm wearing one right now this is prune yogurt uh it's very warm so my hands aren't interesting that well you can kind of see on my thumb but this is just kind of that perfect gothic manny that would have been perfect for Halloween, but we're talking about this one. I'm getting sidetracked, but I absolutely just, this was breathtaking in April. And when Fonte Glass opened their shop, this was the first one to go into my cart. I couldn't resist. So that was Strawberry Basil. This next one is quite the big deal because it is a neon and I don't gravitate towards neons, but this one from Color to Club. This is called Anything But Basic. This is a perfect, perfect highlighter pastel green this absolutely will make anybody's skin tone pop i definitely think if you had fair skin it would make you look like you have a bit of a tan i just oh so beautiful this definitely has to go no it did this one did actually go on my toes and my nails not at the same time but it did in the summertime and i just oh i cannot this whole collection from um color club was actually quite unique and I did pick this up on a Canadian website called Red Cherry so Red Cherry Canada so that's one website that we have to pick up indie po um, mainstream polishes but there's not too many brands out there there's no Orly's or anything like that but I mean maybe this is a chance for me to kind of concentrate on Color Club and see what they have to offer because this one seriously seriously made me change my mind about neons and especially it's pastel like this is just not in my wheelhouse at all. And I'm looking at it like you're one of my favorites for the year. So funny how that works. But that was Color Club's Anything But Basic. And last but not least, we have Vanessa Molina's Silenzio Pruno. I tried this last January. And let me tell you how I wore this for almost the entire month. This polish is breathtaking. Vanessa Molina, the flakies that she puts in here are 
unlike any others that I've seen, I'm currently eyeing her January PPU offering because it is beautiful and all the flakies that I picked up from her, I've instantly just fallen in love with. And the only beef I have is that I wish her bottles were bigger so I could just have it to last longer. Sometimes I even think about grabbing two if I really like it, but like I said, we're trying not to do it anymore. I don't do it often, but hers I think would be worth it. And this is the only brand that I'm like, yes, I would spend the money to have the 11 milliliters for the uniqueness because her flakies are just totally insatiable. They are just so breathtaking and I cannot get enough of them. So that was definitely one of my top polishes for the year. This one actually did come out in, I think, August 2022 for the PPU Aquamarine theme. So yeah, this polish has been out for a while and I finally tried it. So beautiful just breathtaking so that was Vanessa Molina's Silenzio Bruno so the last three I have to share with you are all honorable mentions and the first one is Chloris de Carol's Red Hot Flannel and when I say honorable mentions I mean these are polishes that I loved and did not get to but if I did they would probably become my fave this magnetic was the red magnetic that I've been looking for for a very long time. I wanted a magnetic that had a blackened base with just a red stripe. And this one 100% delivers on that. I mean, in the process, the magnetic line does get a bit skewed. And that happens with all magnetic polishes. But I'm just glad I finally found one that I was really, really looking for. This is so, so good. And it's definitely going to have to get on my nails. Probably for the month of February, you know, for Valentine's Day. So that was Red Hot Flannel. We have Island Peas Fairy Dust. This polish was everywhere in the springtime. This beautiful, like, lavender, kind of like icy purple base with that strong shimmer and that those micro hollow flakes. Oh my goodness. This one I actually did get um, in my Island Pea haul. I didn't get a chance to try this one because I just got it in November. So, oh my gosh. This in the bottle I just know I'm gonna absolutely love and if I don't I'm gonna find a way to love it anyway <laughs> so that was I love Peace fairy dust and the very last pick is a topper from KP shimmer this is called ice and easy this topper you guys is so dang unique this is one topper I would actually wear on its own because I just love that it's in a clear base and those iridescent flakies just sing this is going to look good I think over any cream color but especially dark ones and I think it'll be great for duping polishes as well because I see a lot of makers use these type of flakies in their polishes and that's exactly why I had to pick this one up and I cannot wait to experiment with it so that was KB Shimmer's Ice and Easy Topper all right guys that was it for my favorites for 2023 let me know if we had any of the same ones and what brands are you looking forward to purchasing from this year i'm definitely showing down my purchases but i definitely do know that i want more from great lakes lacquer and i would love sweet and sour lacquers land before time shimmer um collection because i really want that for black friday and i didn't pick it up so i'm hoping to purchase that one but honestly other than that with the occasional shoppings from ppu i'm really gonna slow down my purchases and my goal is to try the majority of my polishes because it is plus a thousand right now. So yeah, that's one of my main reasons for slowing down. But anyways, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate all your support this last year and getting me over the threshold of a thousand subscribers. Super exciting. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what 2024 brings for this channel. I'll see you guys in my next one. Take care.